Hello, welcome to our lesson on opposites and absolute values. First off, let's talk about opposites. We're not going to be talking about up and down, stop and go, happy, sad, rainy, sunshine. We're going to be talking about this kind of opposites. Opposites with numbers. And with opposite numbers, they look exactly like this. One number is positive, the other one's negative. That's about all there is to know about opposites. When you have a number A, its opposite is negative A. If you have negative 2, it would be positive 2. Positive the square root of 2, negative square root of 2. It really just goes like that. This one here may be a little bit more complicated. You have negative 5, you'd have negative negative 5. This is also like saying positive 5, though. So this is just to throw you off, make things seem like they're harder than they are. Because really, it's very, very basic. Fractions, same exact thing. 3 over 4, negative 3 over 4. That's all there is to opposite numbers. All right, so the opposite of 50, negative 50. Opposite of 200, negative 200. That's about it. Opposite numbers are pretty straightforward. Um, the next part <laughs> is our absolute values. And absolute values seem to scare people off a little bit. But basically, what absolute values are is that whatever is inside of these symbols becomes positive. It's like a good therapy or something. Right? Whatever is inside just becomes so happy and positive. All right. Um, maybe not positive like kitty cat positive, but a positive number. So if you have positive 2 inside of these absolute value signs, your result would be positive 2. Whatever's inside, positive. We have negative 5 over 6. It's going to be positive 5 over 6. Negative 2 becomes positive 2. Negative 5, positive 5. Ne positive 143 would remain positive 143. Anything that's negative just becomes a positive value. Negative square root of 4 becomes a square root of 4. All right, that's all absolute values do, basically. These absolute value symbols, you take whatever's inside it, you make it positive, you're done. Now, there are a couple of challenges with absolute values. I'll definitely give you that. And most of the challenges come when we throw in so many negative signs that it makes it confusing. So let's start off with just two negative signs and kind of work our way up. Let's say we have 4 minus negative 4. The first thing that we would solve, and we treat absolute value signs just like they're parentheses. The first thing you do is you solve what's inside them. So in this case, we would end up with 4 minus, what's the absolute value of negative 4? Positive 4. So it would be 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. All right? So 4 minus the absolute value of 4, negative 4, which is 4 minus positive 4, 0. All right? Don't forget that that's 0. It's going to disappear. All right, in this one here, we have three numbers and two negatives. So let's go ahead and solve that one, see what we end up with. We get 13 minus the square root of 12 minus 15. What's 12, or the absolute value, I'm sorry. 12 minus 15, negative 3. Then we'll take the absolute value of negative 3, which will give us positive 3. So 13 minus positive 3 will give us 10. All right, so we solve what's inside the absolute values first, then we make whatever's inside positive, and then we take care of the subtraction last. All right, and here's our most complicated one yet. We're starting out here with five negative signs. Hopefully I gave myself enough room here. Um, first off, Anything inside this absolute value sign becomes positive. So we don't have to figure out what negative negative 2 is, even though it is positive 2. But we don't have to know that. All we have to know, it's inside the absolute value sign. It's going to become positive. So we have negative positive 2 minus negative 0.5. All right, you, you notice I replaced the absolute value signs here with parentheses. And the reason I did that, we took the absolute value of 2, 
whatever, it doesn't matter how many negatives are inside there. The absolute value of 2 is 2. But that negative is still on the outside. So the negative on the outside gets applied after you take the absolute value. So now I have negative 2. So that's actually going to be applied at this point. Negative 2 minus negative 0 0.5. So that's the same as saying negative 2. And when you say minus negative, a minus negative is similar to the distributive property we used earlier, where you'll take this negative and multiply it. Negative times negative, and then a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So our final result will be negative 1.5. All right, we took negative 2 plus 0 0.5. That gives us a final answer of negative 1.5. All right, so that's some challenges you may see with negatives. Um, usually the tough questions with absolute values are just when there's so many negatives that the question really doesn't make much sense like this one that I made up here. Um, largely won't make sense. But other than that, the actual principle of what we do with absolute values and opposites is pretty straightforward. Um, it can just become more complicated as we add in more negatives and more operations and more um, variables and numbers and things like that. So just keep thinking what you do, same order as, as with your order of operations. You do what's inside the absolute values first, then you make it positive, then you apply any outside forces like this negative that you have here, and you should be in good shape. I hope this has been helpful for you and have an absolutely wonderful day.